back on the record at 12.07 p.m. This is the beginning of videotape number two. I'm not sure if I asked you uh, where you received a copy of Exhibit 28, so why don't, why don't I ask you that? Is this also one of the Excuse documents? Excuse me, 28? Which yeah. is? This letter from Robert to Louisa, do you know where you received that? I don't recall. I, I'm, I'm apparently much, much later. I don't recall that I saw it at the time he wrote to her. Much, much later. Yeah. Uh, now this letter discusses uh, also your uncle's property in, in Prague. Did, did you ever receive any nothing, compensation? Nothing whatsoever. Did you this ever is receive? so ridiculous that if one could sell the castle, it would bring some of the money. <laughs> it's a joke. Okay. Did you ever receive any property back out of the Czech Republic? No, nothing. Did you ever receive any compensation for it? Nothing. Okay. Um, By the way, the castle was filled with beautiful art, too, and that was taken all by Heydrich. Uh, in the middle here, it says um, the, the Russians are in Brook. Uh, and we have no ah, idea. Ah, yeah, in Brook are the Russians. And we have no idea when the when, when this is going to be when the, the ownership will be established. Okay. Do you know when the ownership issues with regard to the sugar company were finally resolved? Maybe shortly after, but I couldn't I, I wouldn't know. or like ghosts popping up. Okay. Let's mark as exhibit 29. The, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, I think this is the probate order from the court in Zurich from 1947. Well, that's and it's numbered 378 and 379. Mrs. Altman, what percentage of uh, your uncle Ferdinand's... 25%. Sorry, you have to let me finish the question. Oh, excuse sorry, me. Because it has to come in order when she types oh, it up. Me. What percentage of uh, your uncle's estate did you inherit? A quarter, 25%. And how much... Uh, who are the other heirs? My brother Robert, 25%, and my sister, 50%. Your sister Louisa? My sister Louisa, yes. Um, now, why didn't you return to Austria after World War II? Why I didn't return? Yeah. Uh, well, there was nothing there to return to. Uh, much later, after my brother-in-law Bernhard got his factory back from Austria, uh, then I went back in the early 50s, I went back with my husband. Just to visit, though? Yes, yeah. yes. You never considered moving back there to live? No, I certainly didn't. Uh, did your brother Carl serve in the, in the Allied forces? He was a captain, I was very proud of it, of the Czech army in England. So the Czech government in they exile? Had a, they had a sort of a army in, in England, and my brother served in. And did he return to Europe, or stay in Europe after the war? He went back for a while, but not for very long. Who was Kurt Grimm? Kurt Grimm was a very dear friend of my brother Robert. He was a lawyer and uh, a friend of the family.
did you mentioned earlier your brother Robert returned to Austria? Yes, he was there for a while trying to retrieve some property and something of the sugar refinery, but uh, uh, not with a great deal of luck. You mentioned um, Dr. Renish. What was his first name? Gustav. And did you ever have any uh, opportunity to uh, to judge his legal skills? Would you read back the question, please? No. Did you ever have any opportunity to judge his legal skills? And Not the question before that, please. Question you mentioned and Dr. Renish. What was his first name? Gustav was the answer. Dr. Gustav Renish. No, Call, I saw him as. Calls a for a conclusion. Black's Foundation. I saw him as a great friend of the family and never really questioned whether he was capable or not. Before the war, so before 1938, did you personally have any understanding with regard to uh, whether the Klimt paintings in Ferdinand's home were going to go to the Austrian gallery after his death? No, I never had. After the war, ended in 1945 and your uncle Ferdinand died, uh, did you learn anything with regard to his Klimt paintings? I'm talking about the immediate post-war period, not the, the last 10 years, but let's say the 1940s. No. Uh, I assume that uh, well, I'm not asking you to assume. I'm asking, did you learn anything no, I didn't. after the war? No. Well, you knew that your, your Well, uncle I knew that everything had been taken and was gone, so I didn't begin to question where was what. Did, did your brother Robert ever tell you anything about what happened with the Klimt paintings after the war? Not really. How about your sister Louisa? She wasn't there. She was in Yugoslavia. I had no contact with her whatsoever. I'm talking about right after the war. I'm not talking about later. Did, did anyone ask you uh, what should happen to the Klimt paintings after the war? No. Were you ever asked to, to sign uh, any documents with regard to the Klimt paintings after no, the war? No, not that. Did in in the post-war period, did you know uh, anything about Adela's will? No. The first time I saw it was in '99. Now, was Robert successful in recovering any of Ferdinand's property? Lax Foundation. Not really. What did he recover? Any paintings? Yes, uh, th there were some paintings. Yes, of course, we we did get some paintings uh, because I understand Greenwich negotiated with the. Oh, that's a horrible word. The Bundesdenk, Madame. <laughs> I couldn't do that to you. B u n d e s d e n k m a l a m t. 
Uh, and, but I, uh, yeah, I'm asking what, let me stop you there a little bit, because I'm wondering what, what property did you know had been recovered from Fairbanks Some of the paintings. Okay. Uh, my uncle strictly collected Austrian art, and therefore the paintings were all done by Austrian artists. Therefore, they were very popular for the Austrians. And, uh, but not, not the Klimt paintings? Ambiguous. No, the yeah, okay. Klimt paintings, no. They, they, we didn't get any permission. We wanted to. We tried to get the paintings out, but it, there was no way of getting them out. And uh, then we nego Rienich apparently negotiated back and forth, and then we got some of the other paintings out. Okay. And so you recall uh, <coughs> learning that that certain paintings had been inherited by you and had been retrieved. Yes, and uh, with the exception of one, which I still have, I sold the rest of them because I, I needed it. Okay. What about Ferdinand's home on the Elisabethstrasse? Well, it's Ambiguous. a very sad thing because... Okay, uh, let, me, let me finish the question then. What did, was that Palais ever returned to, to you? No, never. Uh, uh, that's, that was the question. What about the sugar company, the shares of the sugar company? Nothing. Oh, yes, excuse me. A small part was returned, okay. and, and I got some money for it too. Okay. Do you remember how much money you received? I think it was approximately $100,000. Okay. And when was that? Hmm. In, I would say, the late 40s, early 50s. No, in the early 50s, I would say. Okay. I, I really don't know exactly. And you said you never retrieved, uh, recovered any of the Czech property? No, nothing. Okay. I think now's a good time to break. It's 12.15. If we can come back around 1.30. That's fine. Is that fine? Going off the record at 12.19 p.m. What number are we on? 30? Yeah. Yeah. Going back on the record at 1.37 p.m. Good afternoon, everyone. Let's uh, continue about where we left off. I'm going to... Um, Sorry, while well, you get your, your glasses out, yes. we'll mark as Exhibit 30 this uh, page that's numbered 451. It's an uh, excerpt from a letter to your brother Robert from December 6, Mrs. Altman, uh, do you yes. have any? Do you know who prepared this page? No. Okay. Uh, is this one of the documents you received from your niece uh, Nelly after the death of your sister? Yes, but I really didn't know anything about that. Okay. Let's mark as Exhibit Thirty-One. Uh, a page that's numbered 501, that is a uh, second page of a letter apparently sent from Dr. Renish to your brother Robert in uh, February 1948. But that's only a half. Thing. That's all, all we have, and that's what I'm going to ask you. Is is this also a uh, document that was given to you by your niece, Nellie Auersberg, after your sister died? Yeah. Okay. 
Do you know if any of the other pages of this letter exist? That's maybe not well, a fair I, uh, not really. It is 1948. Yeah. You don't remember seeing this before 1998, do you? No, I didn't. Okay. Let's mark as exhibit 32. A letter um, to Dr. Renish. It's a, a transcript of a letter to Dr. Renish uh, from I think from Dr. Garzaroli, G A R Z A R O L L I. Z-A-R-O-L-L-I. Now, is this another document that you received from your niece uh, after your sister died in 1998? Yes, but it's incorrect. What's incorrect? Well, it... Lax Foundation. It, well, let, let me ask you a different, different question. Um, had you... Uh, before 1998, had you ever seen a copy of this letter? No. Had you ever been told about this letter before 1998? No. Okay. Do you recognize the, the writing at the bottom where it says 26-2-1948? No, because it even says in printing, uh, signature not readable. Yeah, but below that, on the bottom of the page, do you see the, those numbers? There's a, d d a date, yeah. but that's written in the handwriting of my brother, Robert. Okay. Let's uh, mark as Exhibit 33. A, uh, another page with the same date, uh, February 26, 1948, at the bottom. This is document number 503. The previous document was document 502. That was Exhibit 32, and it, Exhibit 31 was document 501, in case I forgot. Uh, Mrs. Altman, is this another document you received from your niece? after your sister died in 1998? I guess so. I'm not quite sure whether it was then or in 99 through Janine, but I, may, I guess it may, be, it may have been from Nelly. I don't know. Okay. Uh, if you see, there's a little handwriting on the left side where it says Vaughn and Vaughn, and then at the top... No, no, that's for Robert saying from Gustl, which means from Gustl Rhenish. Well, do you recognize that handwriting? That's Robert, yeah. Okay. And besides, he called him Gustl instead of Gustav, so it's him. Gustl? G-U-S-T-L is sort of a nickname for Gustav. All right. Uh, could it be Louisa's handwriting no. instead of Robert's? No. No. Okay. Let's mark as Exhibit 34. Uh, document numbered 522. Uh, 522 and 523, which is a letter dated March 9th, 1948, from Dr. Garzaroli to Professor, ready for this, Grimschitz, G-R-I-M-S-C-H-I-T-Z. Which one? This one? 
No. That one. Do you remember when you received a copy of this letter? No, I, I, I think that must have been late. I did not get that letter from my sister. Okay. Would that have been, could you have gotten it around January of 1999? Yeah, I suppose. for speculation. I suppose so, because I didn't get it before. Okay. Oh, oh, this is that letter. Yeah, no, I did not get that before. I, I, I didn't quite see that this is the letter. I think this is a letter that made a very big impact on me because it says clearly that in 1948 the director of the then museum writes to his predecessor that it is just too bad that they were not able to get a notarized signature from my uncle and therefore they are in a very precarious situation. Yeah. And so before 1999, had and you... my uncle at that time had already been dead. So if they didn't get the signature before then, how could they get it in 1948? And before 1999, you had never seen this letter? No, never. Even ends with saying, I hope you can help me to get out of this nut undangerous situation. Okay. Let's mark as exhibit 35. Letter dated April 10th, 1948, signed by Dr. Gustav Rienisch to the Austrian Gallery. Tell me when you finished reading it. Yes, I'm finished. Okay. Uh, did you personally authorize Dr. Rienisch to uh, allow the Austrian Gallery to pick up one no, of the paintings? No, I had paintings? no let, let me finish. Let me Excuse finish me. the question. Excuse me. Let me finish the question. Did you personally authorize Dr. Rienisch to allow the Austrian Gallery to pick up one of the Klimt paintings? Um, on April 10th, 1948? No. Okay. Did you authorize Dr. Rienisch to execute this letter? No. Uh, did you see this letter before 1999? No. Did you know before 1999 that Dr. Rienisch had allowed the Austrian Gallery to pick up this Klimt painting? No. Let's mark Exhibit 36, the first page, and I think we don't have any further pages, of a letter dated April 11th, 1948. It's numbered 563. Is this a document you received from your niece, Nellie, after your sister died in 1998? Yes, I'm a little bit leery about what I got from Nellie and what came a little later. Okay. But I think... This appears to be a letter to your brother from Gustav Rienisch. Yeah, correct. Um, at the top, someone has handwritten, received via Bryant. Yeah, April. Bryant was a friend of the family. Well, let, let me ask the question, then you I'm can sorry. answer it. Who was, who was Bryant? Uh, his name was George Bryant. His name was Breuer before. How do you and spell Breuer? B-R-E-U-E-R. -E 
Was he and also he was a friend of the family, and apparently he got that letter out of uh, Austria quicker than the mail would have brought it. That's the only thing. He lived in Vancouver, so I suppose that's how it got there. Uh, was he originally from Austria? Yes, yes. Before 1998, had you ever seen this document? No. Before 1998, had anybody told you about this document? No, none. Uh, or I would have done something about it. Mark as Exhibit 37. A letter that's numbered 566 and 567. It stated April 12, 1948, from Dr. Renish to Dr. Garzaroli. Yes, what do you want okay. to do? Uh, is Exhibit 37 a letter you first received in January of 1999? You're talking about this letter? Yes. Yes. Before January of 1999, had you ever seen this letter? No. Did you ever authorize Dr. Renish to acknowledge the last will of your aunt Adele Blochbauer? No. Did you ever authorize Dr. Renish to acknowledge uh, a declaration by your uncle Ferdinand Blochbauer? With no, it was all handled by my brother Robert, so you can see that I authorized it, but it was all done through him. I had nothing to do with it. But you had no knowledge? No. I now do, but I, I did after 99. Okay. The very last sentence of the letter on page 2. Dr. Renish asks Dr. Garzarelli to confirm this uh, acknowledgement with uh, your brother. Are you aware of any such confirmation by the Austrian gallery? Not that Object I know Objection. Of. You're asking the witness to address a particular portion of the letter, given the fact that it's in German. I wonder if you would just identify the German words that begin and end the paragraph to which you rep make reference. The last sentence, the last four lines of uh, the letter that starts with I C H Pardon me? I T T E, and the last word is W O L L E, and the last word of the letter. You mean, are you talking about the last paragraph? The last sentence of the last paragraph, yeah. I just asked you whether you were aware whether the Austrian gallery ever confirmed. No, not that I know of. Okay. Oh, they, 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 whether they confirmed? No, I never saw a document. I see now what you mean. Okay. That's all. That. Let's mark as Exhibit 38 a letter dated April 13th, 1948, which is numbered 568. This is from Dr. Renish to 
Dr. Garzaroli. <clears throat> Did you see this document before? No. 1999. Let me finish the question. Excuse please. me. Did you see this document before January 1999? You have to answer orally. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay. Let's mark as exhibit. 39, a letter also dated April 13th, 1948, from Dr. Renish to the, here it is again, Bundesdenkmalamt. You'll see it. I can spell it. Uh, it's numbered Mrs. Altman, had you seen Exhibit 39 before January 1999? No. Okay. Did you know um, before 1998 that uh, Dr. Renish had uh, made an agreement regarding the Klimt paintings immediately before applying for export permits? For other artworks? Some specs, not in evidence. Okay. I couldn't hear. Can you read back the question, please? No, I mean, I understood your question. Yeah. You don't have to. Yeah. Just state no, an what. Uh, what uh, would you repeat it? Yeah, can you read back the question, please? <clears throat> Did you know before 1998 that Dr. Renish had made an agreement regarding the Clint Cheney? immediately before applying for export permits for other artworks? No, I just knew that we were trying desperately to get some paintings out for whatever purpose. And he couldn't get them out because his Bundesdenkmalamt Malamt is, uh, were forbidding any of these paintings to go out because they were Austrian, but done by Austrian painters. and. Uh, so that is how we got some of them out. At first, it looked as if we wouldn't get any. Okay. The Rhenish even so there's no there's no question. You yeah. don't have to say anything more. I mean, do you want to add something? Do you no. need to add something? Okay. Do you know who Friedrich Kamann was? K A M M A N. Yeah, he was. Uh, he had a job in the. Uh, he, he probably he was probably a lawyer in the sugar industry. Doctor Kamann. It's a name that rings a bell. Centuries ago, so you think he might have worked for for, for my auntie? For your yeah. uncle. Okay. Um, did you know a? Well, first, what is a portier? P o r t i e r. A concierge. Does that help? It's. Yeah. <laughs> it's just did, did you concierge. know same word? A concierge. C o n c i e r g. Yeah. Okay. Did you know a concierge named Siegert? Yeah, he, I, I can paint him. <laughs> he was always sitting there in a uniform. Uh, where did he work? In the little entree of the Elisabethstrasse, of my uncle's house. Okay. Uh, and your uncle's house you described before was at the Elisabethstrasse 18. Yeah. Did, was it all his personal residence? Uh, it was his personal residence and on the top floor 
where the offices of the sugar industry. I see. So how many floors were there? Three. And the top floor was the sugar industry? Yeah, but I, I must say I, I, I don't recall the top floor very well because I didn't go there very often. But downstairs it was uh, his and Adelis residence. Do you know a who a Dr. Geiger is? No. Geiger? Yeah. No. How about uh, someone named Schulte Strathaus? Pardon me? Schulte Strathaus, S-C-H-U-L-T-E dash S-T-R-A-T-H-A-U-S. Never heard of it. A man? No. I don't fine. know. Uh, if you don't know, that's fine. Let's mark as Exhibit 40, a letter dated February 17th, 1979, um, apparently from your brother to uh, Gustav Rienisch. 79? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. I, is this also a document you received from your niece, Nellie, after your, your sister died? I, I guess so. Okay. Um, you mentioned Amalia Zuckerkandl before. You said she was a friend of your parents? She was a good friend of my mother. I remember her very well. And I must say that I did not remember, I do not remember the portrait, but uh, it was in my uncle's bedroom. It was not in the room where the other clean paintings were. What? Was was Amalia Zuckerkandl Ferdinand Blochbauer's girlfriend? Oh God, no. <laughs> I can't imagine her as a girlfriend at all. But it was, for me she was an old lady, but not, no, my uncle, she, she was <laughs> just a friend. Okay. Did, did Ferdinand Blochbauer have a lady friend uh, in well, 1938? Well, sort of, sort of. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she was a very nice lady, but who, who, whether she was a girlfriend or not is beyond me. Who, I mean, who, he, he traveled with her, and she was there in 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 Jezhan, in the in Czechoslovakia. And as, she was a jolly Viennese woman. Who was that? Gizi Eich was her name. Okay. That but, the person you were just describing who went with him on trips, that was Gizi Yeah, Eich. yeah, yeah. And they had dogs together, and <laughs> but I wouldn't call her a girlfriend. Okay. Uh, did, did you know a, I may have mentioned this this morning, a, uh, a Professor Müller Hoffmann? Yes, I can, it's sort of, it's, it's amazing, but I can remember him very well. Uh, he was, was a he? type of an artist, writer type. I remember him. And he was a nice man. And who was he married to? Mimi was his wife, M-I-N-N-I-E. And Minnie was was, uh, was the daughter of Malchi. Malchi. Uh, excuse me, it, it, it's Amalia, that, but my mother called her Malchi. M a l t s c h i. Let's mark as Exhibit 41, page number 985. <clears throat> do, you, do you recognize whose handwriting this is? Yeah, my sister. Okay. And that, 
whose name is that printed at the at the top left? Louise Gettin. It was uh, uh, my sister's uh, second husband, and she says Pro Memoria. No, you don't have to read it. I'm just trying to identify. Louise Gattin was your sister. Yes. Okay. She she had married first Mr. Gutmann. Yeah, and then Victor Gutmann, and then uh, Joseph Gattin. Okay. And she lived in Vancouver. Yes. And when, and when again your sister passed away in in April '98. Is that April '98. Right? Okay. And is this also a document that your niece Nellie gave you? When you're yeah, I guess so, yeah. Okay. okay. Let's mark as exhibit forty-two. Uh document that's numbered nine seven seven. This looks like it has a lot of different handwriting on it. I'm going to see if you recognize any of the handwriting. Partly Robert, but then the rest I don't know. Oh, Nelly, it. I don't know. I, I never saw this before. Okay. <coughs> okay. I don't know. I, I don't think I even saw that before. That's fine. You want all this back, I suppose. I'm not sure if I've asked you before. When did your brother Robert pass away? Mm. Uh, if you remember. Wait a minute. My brother Poldy died uh, a week after my 70th birthday, which was uh, 86, and Robert must have died, I think, a year later. So. In perhaps in May 1987? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, were you in Vancouver before, uh, immediately before your sister Louisa passed away? In oh, April? sure. I went every summer. I'm going this summer, too. Okay. But were you there in around the time that she died in 1998? I was there. I, I, I was there twice. I was there with her before she died, and then I went back to the funeral. And do you remember when you first heard uh, that there was an issue in Austria with regard to the Klimt paintings? She was in the hospital at that time. Louisa? She was still quite sharp, yeah. Okay. A and uh, that was in March. She was in the hospital for about six or eight weeks. In March of 1998? Yes. And what did you hear? That Objection was hearsay. With regard to the Klimt paintings. Same that was it, but the first uh, newspaper articles in Austria came out about the question of the Klimt paintings belonging to the museum. And I remember Louisa saying, we will need a very good lawyer. Okay. Uh, and, uh, but then she went rapidly downward. And died. How, how? Who told you about the articles in Austria? Uh, the first thing was that my sister-in-law Thea Bentley, Robert's divorced wife, uh, was called by Dr. Sturm, a lawyer in Vienna, whose wife has that beautiful antique shop, and he, he called her. And I was not in touch with him, but he called her to say that a very exciting thing came up. That uh, that. Uh, okay. 
the, the questioning, uh, the authorization of the clean paintings. But then my sister got rapidly worse and we were not even thinking about it anymore and she died just a few weeks later. Over the summer of 1998, did you have any discussions with uh, Peter Moser, who is now the ambassador to the United States from Austria? Peter Moser was a friend of ours when he was consul general in, in Los Angeles, and we had dinner at their house. They came to my house. And I had called him then about nothing else but the house, the Elisabethstrasse, and he said, don't worry, I look it up in the Grundbuch and it will be very easy. Uh, Grundbuch is G-I-U-N-D-B-U-C-H. I'm sorry. G-R-U-N-D-B-U-C-H. And, uh, but that was it. That was in the summer of 98? It was spring of 98, yeah. You had called him? I called him and he called me back. He was very nice. Okay. Did he call you again in September of 1998? Did you recall? Uh, I, his wife was a good friend of mine and I think she called me, but in his position, <laughs> I don't expect him to do anything. I had never called him about the paintings, just the house. <clears throat> Did you ever get any portion of Ferdinand Blochbauer's library returned to you? Were you ever made aware of, a, of an action taken by Dr. Renish to recover the library? No, I think she left her library but to, I don't know, to a group, but, but I, no, I, I never heard anything. Everything was taken out of the house, so I don't know anything about the library. Let's mark as Exhibit 43 a letter dated May 11th, 1998 from Dr. Franz Sturm, which is numbered 1492. Sorry, 43. Oh, yeah. Did you authorize Dr. Storm to write this letter to no, Minister Gehr? No, that was let me, a, let me finish oh, excuse the, letter, me. The, the question. Sorry. Did you authorize Dr. Storm to write this letter to Minister Gehr in May 1998? No, I didn't. Did you know in May 1998 that Dr. Sherm had sent this letter? Well, yes. How did you know that? Mrs. Sturm called me and she was very upset about it because uh, I told her that a few days before receiving that letter, we had given you the authorization to become our lawyer and we didn't know about that. And therefore, there was there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. Okay. And she then called my niece, Nelly, who told her the same thing. Okay. It yeah. was very embarrassing for her, but it's okay now. 
And was that in September of 1998 when you had that conversation? Uh, I don't quite see that. This is written in May. Yeah. Well, my question was, when did you become aware that Dr. Storm had written this letter? Did you know about it in May? When did we make our agreement? This is the problem now. I don't know if it was Without late. divulging too much, it was September of 1998. September 1998. Yeah. Oh, this, see, it is 11 is, is in Europe. Uh, November 1st. This is written on the 5th of November or the 5th of May. I don't, or the 11th of May. 11th of May. That was written, that is the, we, he didn't inform us of that letter. That's what I was trying to. Yeah, to no, that was that. much later that he informed us. Okay. And so sometime in September you had that it discussion. Correct. With his wife. And then, then was the problem that we had just all signed up with you. Okay. Let's mark as exhibit. 44, a letter from me to Minister Gehrer, dated September 13th, My question is, did you authorize me to send this letter to Minister Gehrer? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you assist me in the preparation of this letter? Yes, I did. seems so long ago and <laughs> it's just a few years. Okay. On page three of the letter, yeah, there is a uh, the first complete paragraph talks about making a global settlement offer and discussing a resolution. Are you aware of any response by Minister Gehrer where she agreed to discuss? Pardon me? Are you aware at any time of any response by Minister Gehrer where she agreed to discuss a resolution or settlement of the matter? No. Lights Foundation. Let's mark as Exhibit 45, Oops. Um, I, don't know where it is. I only have two copies of this, unfortunately, I'm not sure why. It's a uh, New York Times article by Judith, you're going to love this name, Dobrzynski, which I'll let mm. you spell. And why don't, after you're done with that, why don't you give it to Mrs. Altman and then you can have this copy there. <coughs>
Do you remember this article? Yeah. If you look at the last paragraph. Now, you had a meeting with Minister Guerra, didn't you? Yes, I did. When was that? It was in March uh, 99. And how did that meeting come about? It was a very cordial meeting. How, uh, how was it planned? It was, it was pl Mr. Chernin drove me to meet Mrs. Minister Guerra. Chernin is C-G-E-R-N-I-N. Were you, you were in Vienna? I was in Vienna. Why were you in Vienna? Uh, the Viennese Kultusgemeinde, uh, uh, excuse me, the Jewish community invited me uh, to Vienna uh, to participate in a, a symposium, S-Y-M-P, O-S-I-M, uh, in the museum. And uh, I took my youngest son with me to accompany me. And it all was extremely cordial. And my meeting with Minister Guerra couldn't have been more cordial. Okay, what, what did you discuss with her? Uh, at first, we, she thought I had a good sense of humor, so we just, she just laughed along the whole time. And, and at the very end, we told me about her grandchild and everything. And at the very end, I said, for minister, uh, we didn't discuss any legal question. I just want to say that when you were in New York, uh, you were asked about the Blochbauer case. And your answer was to contest a will, you have to go to court. And I said, for minister, there was no will. It was a request to her husband. And she said with a very nice Viennese accent, das weiß ich ja, I know that. And I went home and talked to my son, and he took it all down on a little machine. And I said, I think uh, everything looks wonderful. She knows exactly where we stand. Move to strike is non-responsive. Dear sir. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, during that, well, let's let's mark as Exhibit forty-five um, a letter from you to Dr. Gerbert G E R B E R T Frodel F R O D L. Uh, dated 23rd of February, 1999. I wrote to him. Well, you tell us. Is this a letter that you wrote, Mrs. Altman? My goodness, I even forgot that. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he wrote, Dr. Frodo wrote to me that he would like to take me to lunch. And I did that. We went to lunch when I was in Vienna. Okay, okay. so you, you met with Dr. Frodo. Who is Dr. Frodo? Dr. Frodo is the director of the Austrian Gallery, okay. the Belvedere. And by the way, who is Minister Guerra? Minister Guerra is the Minister for Culture and Education in Vienna. Uh, so you met with Dr. Frodel. Where did you meet with him? I, well, it, I met him at first at that symposium, and he told me he was going to call me at the hotel and we would have lunch together. And he came and picked me up and took me to a very lovely little restaurant, the Stephansplatz, and we had lunch there. Oh, oh Stephansplatz, St. Stephen's Place. 
Uh, and did you discuss the Klimt paintings with Dr. Frodel? Well, he was a he's a very I'm nice man. I'm going to object to the question, not because technically the question is um, defective. It's a yes or no question, but I, I feel certain the witness will not answer with a yes or a no. So I'll object that it uh, calls for a narrative and hearsay. Did you discuss the Klimt paintings with Dr. Frodel? Right away after we had a little drink, Dr. Director Frodel said, now that we are alone, I still remember his words. Let's see what's in our hearts. And I said, well, Director Frodel, we are not alone. I'm one of four, and I have a lawyer. But tell me what is in your heart. And he said, look, we have enough landscapes. We can spare the landscapes, but just don't take the portraits away. Well, the strike is not so I went home and had told my son the exact conversation. He had it down on tape, and I said, Jim, everything is all right. They know where we stand. And here's a... Uh, the discussion you just described, that was the full extent of your discussion of the Klimt paintings with Dr. Frodel? Yes. Calls for him, so. okay. I then... It's okay. There's no, other, no other questions. Did you recall something else that you discussed with Dr. Frodel? No, no matter what I discussed. I just So is it correct that you came away from your meetings with, with Dr. Frodel and Minister Gehr uh, cautiously optimistic that the paintings would be returned? I wouldn't even be say ambiguous. cautiously. Uh, Jimmy has it all on tape, what I said. And uh, he, he made a little video of me, Dr. Frodel, leaving from the hotel. And it was all a very amicable visit. So you were optimistic that the Very. Okay. Uh, let me finish. You were optimistic the paintings would be returned in March? Yes, I had no doubt in my mind. Okay. Council, we have a continuing relevancy reservation with respect to all of this. That's Is that fine. correct? That's fine. I just want to make sure that that's our understanding. Yes. Okay. You can make a relevance objection at any time. Well, I'm not making relevance objections, and I just want to make sure that it's clear we have a stipulation that it's reserved for trial. Yes, that's what I offered before we started, and I agree to that. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's mark as Exhibit 46 a document number 1205 and 1206, which is a letter from you dated June 15th, 1999. Council, I believe this will be 47. Oh, I'm sorry. I okay. remember that letter. I did not remember that The first I one you missed, yeah, no, which I, is actually fairly impressive. I, so I, I, I have 46 mm, as um, right. Mrs. Altman's letter to Dr. Frodo. Yeah, it was the newspaper that I didn't have an extra copy of that caused the uh, confusion. Thank you very much, Council. 47 is 1205 and 1206. This is a letter dated June 15, 1999, from you to the Bayrat. What is the Bayrat? Bayrat was a council of uh, men and apparently a couple of women, too, that right. were the council. The Bayrat B was? B-E-I-R-A-T is uh, the council, uh, the group of, of people that formed the council around Minister Guerra. Okay. Uh, and and I wrote in Well let me ask you let me ask you a question. Me. Uh, I did didn't end up with the copy council. Oh I'm sorry. Thank you. And you corrected the, the number. I forgot to keep handing it out. Forty exhibit forty seven, the first page is a letter in German and the second page is is a letter in English. Are these both uh, letters that you prepared? It's a, yeah, I prepared it and I wrote it in German and then in English. So the second page, 1206. It's the same letter. Let, let me finish. 1206 is an English translation that you made of the, the My letter. My own German translation. Which is 1205? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, and you sent the, the German version to the Bayrat? Correct. Okay. And um, what was the purpose of sending this letter? The purpose was that since I came back uh, in very optimistic in March uh, 98, uh, 99. 99, excuse me, uh, I wanted to let them know the way I felt and that uh, I would try as the last block bower that uh, we could work together to find a way that the gold portrait would remain in Vienna. Okay. Did you ever receive an answer to this letter? I never received an answer. Okay. Um, in later that month, at the end of June 1999, did you learn that the Bayrat had recommended to Minister Gehr not to return the Klimt painting? Yes, and it took me by Tremendous surprise and disappointment. Did, did the Bayrat uh, recommend returning any property to the heirs of Ferdinand Blochbauer? Uh, yes, uh, 19 pieces of uh, porcelain which the museum had bought at the time, and some sketches that were in the Albertina, uh, clean sketches to the gold portrait. fall of 1999, did you authorize your attorneys to institute an action in Austria to recover the Klimt paintings? Yes. Okay. Uh, and as part of that action, uh, or the initiation of that action, did you uh, seek a waiver of court costs? Yes, because the original court costs were prohibitive, so we tried to get them down to an affordable price. Okay. Ex let's mark as Exhibit 48 your application, which is dated September 30th, 1999, and is numbered 2178 to 2181. Am I on the right number now, 48? Yeah. That's what I have. Okay. <laughs> now, Exhibit 48, is that a document that you prepared? Yes. I mean, the handwritten portion of it. Correct. And that's your handwriting? Yes, it is. And does this, did this document in September, well, let's go, sorry, to the fourth page, the last page, is that your signature? On the last page, uh, 2181. Oh, there's another page. Yes, it's my signature. Okay, and did you sign this around September 30th, 1999? Correct. And on as of September 30th, 1999, was were all of the answers to the questions on this form with regard to your assets true and correct? Yes, they were. Okay. I still left the same car. <laughs> As of September 30th, 1999, had you received the porcelain and drawings that you said the Bayrat had decided to return in end of June 1999? I must say, uh, I, I don't recall if it was exactly, but I guess I did or I didn't. I, 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 that I don't know exactly. You don't know. Okay. It came, but if it was right then and there, I don't know. Let's mark as the next exhibit, 49. Now you have me worried every time I do a number. <laughs> this is a letter dated 
October 19th, 1999, so about three weeks later, the number is 2200. Is that your signature on this page? Yes. Okay. Uh, is this a letter that you wrote? Yes. Who is it addressed to? It was addressed to Section Chief Dr. Rudolf Vran. And who was Dr. Vran? Uh, I guess he was, uh, well, he definitely was a part of the Bayrat, but maybe he was heading it. Or okay. And does this refresh your recollection whether or not you had received the drawings in porcelain uh, as of October 19th, 1999? Well, apparently nothing happened. That's why I wrote that uh, uh, four months had gone by and, uh, and nothing had happened. And I say I'm 83 and weeks and months play a big part in my time of life. And I can't understand why all my questions remain unanswered. For the clarity of the record, that's a reference to what is in German here on, Correct. on the Correct, that's document. what I answered, yes. Let's mark as Exhibit 50, document number Is this the response you received from Dr. Vron to your October 19th letter to him? Excuse me, I, I'm kind of a little bit... Uh... Oh. We say it in... in in short time he's going to, I forgot that. I mean, yes, he says that it's too complicated and therefore it takes a little while. Okay. Is this the response that Dr. Vron sent you? Apparently, yeah. yeah. Let's mark as the... Yeah, it says that uh, okay. he, he... Let's mark as Exhibit 51, document number 2237 through Two two four one. Okay. And Exhibit fifty one is a letter. At the end, there's the date tenth of November, nineteen ninety nine. It says for the federal minister, Dr. Braun, at the end. Does this refresh your recollection when Dr. Vron informed you that you could pick up or your agents could pick up the drawings in porcelain that were being returned? Yeah. When was that? It says here... Well, his letter came... Well, like, look at the last page of this letter. Calls for a conclusion. Okay. If that recollection... Uh, uh, November 10th, 1999, for Minister Gera, Dr. Brown. Okay. okay. Let's mark as exhibit. 52, um, 
documents. That's number 2262 through 2265, uh, dated November 2nd, 1999. This is the order on the application for uh, relief from the cost requirement. I won't ask you to read the whole thing, but in case you need to refer to this to refresh your recollection, did you learn of a ruling by the Austrian court with regard to your application for a uh, waiver of the court costs? Yes. And what was that ruling? It was still money that I couldn't afford. Do you recall what, how much money the court wanted you to pay? Well, it's, uh, it goes by what they call the Streitwert, the, 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 the object in question is it's too valuable. It's in, in connection with that that the court establishes a price. Okay. And, and I couldn't afford it. Do, my question was, do you know how much you personally were required to pay as I think a result of this it was ruling? A, Five hundred thousand dollars. So they, they reduced it then to a quarter million dollars. I think it was first half and then a quarter. Do you know if the Austrian government appealed the decision on the court costs? Lex Foundation. Uh, yes, they, they, uh, they charged more first and then they reduced it, as far as I was gone. But, but it was still too high for me. Right, but do you know if yeah. after the, court, the costs were reduced by the court, if the Austrian government filed an appeal of that decision? Same objection. I don't know. Okay. Be there? I don't know. It's okay. Well, let's mark and see if this refreshes your recollection. Exhibit fifty three, number two two seven four to two two eight four. The pending question is whether this is what? Refreshes your recollection that the Austrian government appealed the decision on the court costs. Tax Foundation. And an appeal signed by Dr. Toman, who's present here on 13th of December, 1999. Same objection. Okay. Where is it? It's at the end.
I you don't you don't recall seeing this? I'm sure I did, but I don't recall it offhand now. Now on page three of this document, two two seven six. Two two seven six, yeah. Yeah. At the paragraph on the bottom that begins A two. Yeah. Can you read that sentence? Yeah. And then I'll ask you a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in this appeal by the Austrian government, Dr. Toman and the Austrian government state that you left out of your application, that you left off of your application for assistance on the court costs, uh, the fact that artworks had been returned to you. I left it out. What, did you read this? Yeah, I know yeah. that yeah. I, 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 yeah. I received it. The, the At the time that you filled out your application in September 1999, did you in fact already have the porcelain and drawings in your possession? I must say that I don't know okay. exactly when I got it. Okay, that's fine. 99, I must have had them then. At the end of 1990, but we're talking about in September of 1990. I didn't have it then. Yeah. Okay. Now, what did you do with the porcelain that was returned at the end of 1999? It was used uh, to uh, take, pay the bill for uh, your firma, former law, law firm. Okay. Well, who? Uh, Fried Frank and. What was the third name? <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Let's mark as Exhibit 54. Yeah, it's in, it, in its entirety. Okay. It's huge for that. A, uh, exhibit 54 is pages 2285 and 2286 uh, from uh, Bednarczyk. Again, there it is, the spelling, to me. Now, yeah. did, did all, let me ask you the question first before yeah. you talk. Did all of the heirs sell their share of the porcelain? No. Okay. And my niece Nelly kept it. Okay. It's made. And what percentage did she keep? She kept the quarter. Okay. The other 75%, did they sell the porcelain? Yes. Okay. And is this, does this document reflect the amount that was received for the sale of the porcelain, of the 75% of the heirs of Ferdinand Blochbauer? Yes. Okay. What did the heirs decide to do with the drawings that were returned by the by Austria? Uh, my niece Nelly kept hers uh, and gave one to her son and one to her daughter. And my nephew Francis sold kept one and sold the rest to the museum in Ottawa. In where? In Ottawa. The, Otto the Ottawa. Ottawa. Yeah. Oh, the way I pronounced <laughs> it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ottawa. Okay. I'm sorry, so you were, that was Francis 
Uh, Francis uh, kept one and sold the others to the museum. Okay. And what and, about you? And I sold mine in New York to the Galerie Saint Etienne. And the, your, the heirs of your brother Robert, did they? What did they do? They did the same. Okay. Let's look at Exhibit Fifty Five, which is marked two three six three through two three six five. It's a letter dated April 25th, 2000, from the Gallery Saint-Étienne, Jane Callier. Okay. Does this reflect the amount that uh, Correct. Yes. you and the and Robert's heirs received? Correct. Yes. Let me, let me finish the question. Does this I'm reflect sorry. the amount that you and Robert's heirs received as a result of the sale of the drawings that you recovered from Austria? Correct. Can we take a short break? It's of course it's quarter of three, and I don't have that much more to go over. Uh, I'm directed at two fifty p.m. Going back on the record at three o eight p.m. Okay, we're back on the record. I just have have uh, maybe one or two more questions, um, Mrs. Altman. After. Uh, filed suit in California in August of 2000. Did you receive an assignment of claims from any of the other heirs of Ferdinand Blochbauer? Yes, I did. And from who, which of the other heirs assigned their claims to you? And my nephew, Francis Goodman, and my nephew, George Bentley, and uh, Trevor Mantle. And the, who, is, the, who is Trevor Mantle? Trevor Mantle is the nephew of my late uh, sister-in-law, second wife of my brother Robert. And uh, her heir was Trevor Mantle. Okay. And, and who is George Bentley? And George Bentley is the son of my brother Robert. Okay. And who is Francis Goodman? Francis Goodman is a, is the son of my sister Louise eh? okay. and the brother of Nelly Auersberg. And and presently you're representing all of their interests with yes. regard to the suit against Austria for the claim to painting. Calls for a legal conclusion. Yes. Okay. I have no further questions. Uh, we've agreed to adjourn the deposition for today. It's three a little bit after three o'clock to give the court reporter some time to uh, prepare a very rough transcript so that we can make sure that most of it was transcribed. And we'll resume tomorrow. Scott, when would you like to resume tomorrow for cross-examination? Oh, I thought you wanted to go on today. We're, we're going to allow the court reporter a little opportunity to work on the transcript given the difficulty of oh, some of the I language. Do um, you need any German spelling? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't we start at 10 o'clock tomorrow? 10 o'clock, fine. Here, same place? Please. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Going off the record, Thank at you, 3 Mrs. 10 p.m., conclusion of volume one of the deposition.